Natalie Holt, welcome back to Friends from Work, a longtime friend. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, nice to be back. <laughs> Two years ago, we were sitting here talking about your masterful work on season one. And I have so mm -hmm. many questions about the evolution of season two. What is it like working on a season two of a project? Specifically, how do you take on the challenge of what themes are going to stay exactly the same? What themes do you want to evolve and in what ways and what is completely new and fresh to you? Is that fun? Is that a challenge? Kind of take me through the whole season two process. Oh, I had so much fun on, on this show. It just really, I, it's the first time I've ever done a season two of something. Mm. So um, that was a first for me. Like, So coming back to something that had been so much fun to score in the first place and then getting to do it again and mm -hmm. just make it bigger and bolder was great. And, you know, I kind of had a, a big music editor team. There were five of them. So mm. I'd kind wow. of... Um, by the time we got to watch the first cut of an episode, there would be a lot of music in there that was already from season one. And we'd kind of spot have a spotting session with the editor and the producer, sometimes the directors. And they'd just say, we love this. This cue can just stay. We love this one. And it was kind of clear, like if something was just working, then we'd use it. And they were like, but we would like to just change the end, la, la, la. So I'd kind of go back to the stems from season one with some of those cues and then add some things in or rework them. And wow. then we'd watch something where it was like, well, this cue works, but it needs to do something else. And then I'd rewrite some and it just kind of made sense of what should stay and what should change. And then just this is like episode three was just a new territory, new time period, new character like the honky tonk piano um and the sort of more i don't know 1890s style score yes. which was a bit of a departure so it was fun to sort of have those moments as well they had to be kind of fun to just because the show has a time travel nature to it to do the right. whole time thing i saw you posted that video of the the piano player playing the ragtime version of that theme how fun is that wow yeah, it was so fun. And it just came along at the end because we'd sort of scored the Victor Timely as a, you know, like a pub or whatever, you know, the guy in the back of the pub playing along with it when mm -hmm. he was sort of introducing the um, his machine. And so, yeah, having had that honky tonk thing all the way through, it just came right at the end. It's like, oh, should we try a honky tonk version of the Marvel theme? Yeah, yeah, let's try it. And then it stayed. <laughs> it was a, okay. an experiment. On that exact same note, I think episode two was the episode that had like the uh, like disco 70s theme, right? Wasn't it? Well, disco theremin as well. Like that was a, <laughs> <laughs> a new genre invented right there. There you go. There you go. Uh, well, first off, I had to say last time we had you on, uh, you were talking about how John Williams is, you know, unsurprisingly a, a hero of yours and how you were sad because you were supposed to go see him live. And then I think he had to cancel. So I have to say... Since that time, you have now composed a series with John Williams. Uh, so I think you have successfully, uh, you know, kind of surpassed whatever your initial John Williams expectations would have been uh, just from attending a concert. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so mad. Yeah, you're right. And then um, crazy. I now have like, dear Natalie, lots of love, John, like a signed oh gosh. Um, manuscript from Obi-Wan Kenobi on my wall in my studio. So. That's cool. so cool. Yeah. Got life goals. Oh yeah. What a dream. <laughs> uh, you were talking about some of these different themes though, and, and the, the way that you get to explore them differently in different time periods, the, the Loki score, the tracks are not sequenced chronologically. Uh, it seems like they're, they're sequenced either more thematically or just kind of for a better flow. And I was curious if that's something that you get to have a, a hand in when you're building it out. And, and if that's something that you kind of make an intention of doing with all your scores. Uh, and just because I know some some Marvel projects, for instance, are very much like you press play on the score and it's just kind of the music straight through uh, in the order that you hear it in the film or the or the series. Yeah, no. So um, I, ha I didn't have any say in the Obi album that was just. I'm Disney put that together, but 
I was totally in charge of this album. Like I oh, remixed cool. the tracks. I kind of cut some tracks together to make musical sense. Because sometimes you hear a cue and it works to picture, but then just hearing it on its own, it's like, oh, it's mm-hmm. got 10 seconds of motoring along where something's happening. And so I, I spent weeks uh, remixing, re- remixing the album with um, the engineer and wow. then mastering the album. And then, yeah, like I wanted an order that just felt like a sort of journey within itself. I did, I wanted to sort of have some ups and downs and shape to it. So I definitely, yeah. those those four Loki albums that I've done are all very crafted by me. And I love that you've got one behind you. Oh, I do. Yes. Which I think Robbie. I saw you were also, you also spoke into the, like the creative decisions in terms of how the actual vinyl like presentation came out right and and your work with mondo there yeah that mondo was so lovely to work with i really really enjoyed putting that together it was it was really fun and i love the artwork on it yeah really oh it came out so well really and it sounds that. really yeah. good um oh thank you and yeah that, it, I'm i'm glad to hear you say that about kind of getting to go in and work on these albums because they do feel uh distinct and in, in that way like that's one of the, the reasons I, I seized on it is it feels like kind of one more act of creation that we get from you there where it's like it's not just that we're ripping the audio uh, that we're that we're getting from the the show. But you're actually kind of giving us new little reveals whenever you go in and listen to it. So it's a real treat for for folks that which I know we have a lot of uh, in, in our listener base, folks that just like to go in and, and listen to these scores. And it was fun. like I just I delivered the album, um, the first volume from season two. And then I just had this idea. I was like, can I put some of Tom's voice in? Because like mm-hmm. I wanted him. I want there were a few. Mo- and then so there's one track in there. I, I had like five yes. actually that I tried to get, but they're like they wouldn't approve it. They only approved that one moment. But it was fun to to have him say something before the Bavarian we we had a listener point that out because they, <laughs> they asked is this the first time in the history of of marvel scores where you have spoken a uh, dialogue in a track like that and to my knowledge it it is <laughs> <laughs> natalie we're obviously as fans coming off a crazy twist if you're just listening to this now uh episode four just premiered last week and one of the things specifically I wanted to talk to you about was that last credit track. Uh, there is such a crazy edit at the end of the show where the whole thing goes black for maybe six seconds, like longer than it should. And then you're all you're waiting for what's going to happen. And the credits start rolling and you have this beautiful track that's really eerie. It's kind of haunting. It's somber. And it's mixed super quiet, actually, on Disney Plus, all of which. I very much enjoyed. So can you just talk to me a little bit about that specific track? Oh my God. I had such a nightmare. I I just had a different track there. And then um, Kevin Wright was like, I'm not sure this works. And I was just about to go into a session and I did a this super quick, like just came up with it like the night before the session and recorded it. And then oh I was like, what, what about this? And Kevin was like, love it. And it just kind of got put in really last minute and then I was mixing the album and I completely forgot about it and then everyone like it kind of went on Twitter and people were commenting on that track and I was like I better put that on the album it wasn't on the album and I today I've just been like we need to put this track on the album so I'm just adding that on I hope people are happy to that that will be on there (laughs) (laughs) that's crazy they will be (laughs) <laughs> well, it, it it is so appropriate for the moment. I think, you know, it's partially fans just also like you do such a good job of encapsulating that moment, even if it was a last minute thing. And the music feels how we're all feeling as fans were watching it. So good job. It was it was more like of a I think it was the Mobius theme or it was like a more kind of normal ending that you were like you felt OK again because the music came back in. And then Kevin was like, I think we need to hold this feeling like, how can uh, we musically do that? But I love it when hmm. you kind of just come up with something quickly that really works. It's so satisfying. <laughs> That's amazing. It's So talking about that that moment, and, and maybe you answered this, we had uh, someone write in and compare that to the, the famous 
finale of uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey and Dave kind of falling through time and space and how it, the the music there sort of reflects the 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 pandemonium and and the like a, a little bit of a tragic confusion and so that definitely came across was that something that you had in mind as a as a reference is that just uh you know you you happen to channel you know what's considered to be one of the greatest films of all time because you're a genius or, or sort of <laughs> how did that come out um i did i really love that sort of serial atonal music like um Ligeti, you know mm -hmm. the shining all those those kind of pieces of music are, are just so powerful and um as a string player as well i just kind of love using those weird effects um and so um i had a, a choir a 40 piece choir and eight strings play that piece and this amazing oh, wow. cellist um sort of doing these quite sort of soloistic mm. thing that just worked really well with the, with this layer of voices so yeah it was it was it was a uh, fun to channel that the last question for me natalie uh you have done a good job as i mentioned earlier of posting little clips of like that ragtime piano you posted a soloist earlier on on social media um it might have been a cello or a violin solo or something like that um nickel harper i think that was eric he, he okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. It, well, and so you have the theremin. Yeah, yeah, it kind of blew up. That's what I was going to say. And you had the theremin thing, which is so cool for people to see. For anyone who doesn't know what a theremin is, it's just a wild instrument to watch because the right hand looks like they're not playing anything. Uh, it's wild. But hmm. my last question is, I, I, I do love how you're involving all these different unique solos and instruments. We talked about the disco theme. Are there any surprises musically for listeners to be tuned into? Any fun new instruments coming up still in these last two episodes? um episode five i just think you're gonna um your mind is gonna be blown by episode five. Mm. Oh, you love to it's, hear it's it it's my favorite yeah <clears throat> five and six for me are like i don't know yeah and there's some musical moments that that you'll enjoy and yeah okay <laughs> that's fun well and that, that kind of lines six. up with blink twice if disney's right behind you <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I think I saw that Eric Martin uh, in, in an interview that released this week, kind of following the the episode four airing. Uh, he said that five and six were his favorites, and then he thinks people are going to kind of be blown away. So I, it would make sense, I suppose, that the music would would reflect that. Uh, well, well all I, I guess can say is I get like oh, yeah. I get a bit of a musical moment where it's just me. <laughs> oh, what's going okay. On. So Let's go. It, it feels like a really big moment for for kind of having the culmination of two and a half years work and all the things I've been planting all the way through season two. So I'm excited. And you know what? Like, yeah, if you want to chat again after you've seen six, then give me a shout. <laughs> oh, that would be so We want to chat every month. If you want to chat every month. Uh, <laughs> no, I, that's that's so fun to hear because. I, you know, I I think we we talked about this a bit last time we we spoke, uh, but now yeah that we've had the the full season one and then now that we're almost through season two, your you know your contribution to the music of the MCU, but also just to to film and TV music over the last few years is is really pretty monumental uh, <laughs> as people that. We we really nerd out and, and get into to film and TV scores and talk about that a lot on the podcast. And it, your work is really special in that it sort of it, it tends to transcend the people that just nerd about nerd out about scores. Like we talk about how you see clips of like marching bands playing uh, the Loki <laughs> theme, the green theme, and and like it, it's a Sha score Shaq, that Shaq DJing to the green theme. <laughs> right? it, it's something oh, I that. Seen it. Oh, I'll send it's, it. uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's, it's permeated. So I, again, it, it's just, it's really, I think it's really fitting, uh, to, uh, of, of all the shows to kind of get the showcase, uh, the, the work the composer has done. I think this is the the perfect one. So I would love to, to oh, talk after you. these episodes. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, give me a shout. I definitely. I mean, I just think hopefully you'll enjoy five and six. And I really went to town on episode six. So yeah, it'd be, yes. be great to see what you thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, you're the best. We are yes. so oh. thankful for your time. And we are such big fans if you haven't gathered that already. So can't <laughs> wait to see what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you again. <laughs> Thanks, Natalie. Bye.